Today, I interviewed Bill Potvin, son of Arthur Potvin, the owner of Hosmer Mountain Soda. We talked about the history of his own family business and discussed what makes small family businesses important. So you are Bill Potvin, correct? Yes. A member of the fourth family owning Hosmer Mountain. Correct. Do you know much about the previous family owner? Uh, a little bit, yeah, I would say so. Oh, by the way, just for your own interest, Potvin is a French-Canadian word. It means jug of wine. That's a good name for going into the beverage industry, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, the company started with the, a, a couple of brothers, the Clark brothers. Uh, I, I would describe them as swamp Yankees. The ones who started that is a spring water company in 1912 uh, when uh, there was the soda business was exploding then. So by 1916, they had extended their business over to soft drinks. So the first soda was made in 1916, where they start, they had probably eight flavors or something. Around the early 20s, I'm thinking 21, 22, something like that, a Jewish guy from New York City might have been on vacation or something like that. He was supposedly in the hotel industry, a Russian Jew. He fell in love, that's a quote from his sons, he fell in love with Willimantic. And then he ran it, Mr. Beller, Abraham Beller, ran it uh, through the 20s and 30s and made quite a bit of money on it. And the interesting thing about Mr. Beller was in the Jewish tradition, they're so obsessed with education of their kids that mm -hmm. unlike what my dad did with his kids, it was more like a farm family where he, you got some cheap labor. So John and I, his two sons who were about 10 years old, 11 years old at the time, we worked with him all summer and you know, in the soda business, unloading the trucks, bottling the soda and that. But Mr. Beller's kids were trained in music and that kind of stuff. And one of his sons actually was a backup guy in Benny Goodman's band. You probably never heard of Benny Goodman, right? No, I have not. One of the biggest bands in the United States during the, the heyday of uh, that swing music and all that. Good evening and welcome to a one night stand with the big bands. And after Mr. Beller, uh, he sold it in probably in the late 40s to Fred Meyer. And Fred was kind of an easygoing guy that probably wasn't a real good businessman. He was too generous and all that kind of stuff. And he, he it was going downhill already. And uh, he wound up having a heart attack in like 55, 56. Hosmer was up for sale then, his, his widow. And my dad, who had spent some time as a Pepsi-Cola driver, so he knew the soft drink industry, he used to compete with Hosmer Mountain. He talked my mother into uh, taking a chance and buying the company. And that's when we started uh, in, in the late 50s. And then from the late 50s today, it's been the Potvin. So that our time in control is greater than the other three companies put together at this point. You said when you were younger you used to bottle sodas. Did you also label, distribute, and Yeah, carton? Had a different operation. Dad would keep us busy. Mm -hmm. And he said, if you work like men, you can have all the soda you want. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we averaged, I'm serious, we averaged three to four sodas a day. For, for like five years when we were between 11, 12, 13, 14, in that range. I knew that soda is not a nutritional item, but yeah. I always felt like it was clean fuel. We needed the energy. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't work like that. We were playing sports too. So we were always on the go and you needed energy. So we, we were chugging sodas on a regular basis. And you had as many as you needed. I mean, of yeah. course you had to do if the work. Well, that but... helped, yeah. yeah. If, I wouldn't want to have lost weight at that point because, you know, even when I was in high school, for God's sakes, I was six six foot tall and I weighed 135 when I played baseball for <laughs> Wyndham High School. No kidding. That's a little too thin. <laughs> How many family members do you work with? At one point, we, my, my father and mother had six children. I'm the oldest son and there was 
three other sons and two daughters. The daughters never got involved particularly, but the three other brothers were all involved. So we were four brothers that ran the company for years. Uh, only recently, within the last two and a half years, we lost John, who was one year younger than me, kind of like my twin brother. There's three of us left now. Uh, Bill, John, Andy, and Chuck. You know, it's always difficult when you have a family business. A lot of people go into a family business and the first thing you know, the family's in disarray, they're fighting. The yeah. You know, too many, between what you're supposed to earn, how much you contribute, it's always a, mm -hmm. not always, but it can be a formula for disaster that family businesses sometimes ruin the family. I think my mother always had a good idea. She said, I don't care how long you hours you are if, if you put in more hours than the other guys then maybe that's your problem your workaholic she she demanded that we always got the same size paycheck that's and funny. that probably encouraged us to continue to go on okay even though certain jobs are harder than others we always got the same paycheck and so that was a good point uh, so uh we're still doing it, Chuck and Andy and myself are the brothers running it now. How many non-family members are a part of your business? Okay, how many employees do we have? Yeah. Right now, I'd say we have uh, a total of about 12, 12 total employees. Nice. You know, part-time, full-time. And it's been sort of like that for maybe the last 25 years, approximately. That gives you a good feeling for the size of the company. It's just small business. Yeah. How has Hosmer been keeping up financially? There's certain things going against us right now. The fact that sugar is now recognized as a negative in your health life. So yeah. there's certain people, that I call it the American Medical Association, is caught up with this soda business and other sugar. So that now there's more and more feelings that extra sugar is not necessarily good for you, even if you're not obese, but you can wind up with diabetes from bombarding yourself with sugar. I don't have it, but mm -hmm. it's possible you could get that. So if we were all fat guys, it would be an acceleration of your death too, you know? Mm -hmm. Overweight people die younger than other people. So I, I would say we're not selling more total soda than we did years ago. Okay, that's but interesting. We're, we're doing better because we finally positioned ourselves as a premium product. Instead of worrying about what mm. they're selling a two liter bottle for somewhere. Yeah. You know, when, when we were in it, there was no two liter. The, the two liter bottle came in probably in the mid 60s. Oh, yeah, probably in the mid 60s. And all of a sudden, somebody could get a whole two liter bottle for 69 cents. That's a lot of soda. <laughs> yeah, it is. Today we're going to do the metric system. Oh, metric. All right. What's two liters? Rocky. This is two liters. The no returnable, resealable two liter bottle from Pepsi Cola. It's bigger than two quarts. That's the cheapest way you can buy Pepsi. It, if you have equipment that doesn't go real fast, and you got companies pounding out two liter soda that's cheap, as cheap as that, you're in trouble unless you position yourself as a premium product so being in glass that's a good i a good thing to hang your hat on because glass doesn't mm -hmm. let the carbonation out and it's it, it stays it, it's a form of a purity you know a glass is it's, it's an inert material compared to a plastic bottle if you go next to a plastic bottle with a flame yeah uh, it'll melt and then it'll get hot and burn and first thing you know there's black smoke coming out i just felt like i wanted to improve the product. I, I, that's my job. I, I've got a couple of degrees from UConn and uh, my dad's product was always good. We had a good reputation, but it wasn't great. I, I wanted to make it great. I wanted to make every single flavor that we make equal to or better than anything out in the trade. When I got to be a junior, I, had, I was not, I didn't find anything I liked and all of a sudden I took a chemistry course and I said, wow, I like this and I started getting interested in chemistry. So having that background, then when I went to Yukon, I took more chemistry and some biology and science. I'm a science person. Mm -hmm. And that has allowed me to, I can analyze, I, I, the word is, I can reverse engineer something, which is a fancy, 
scientific word for copying. <laughs> you, you can, if a, if a product has certain characteristics that you can uh, measure, then once you've measured them, then you can set your product to, to do the same thing. Okay, the total mm -hmm. acid, the sugar level, the carbonation level, all that stuff. And then you know enough not to buy the cheapest flavors. Every company has an array of flavors, the extract companies. So they have premium products and cheaper products. So we've always bought the premium products and then used my knowledge to, to get some of the other things. Uh, I might copy uh, something from a, a company that I just said, wow, that's the best. I can remember having the orange soda on the kitchen table at my dad's house. The sun-kissed orange, the orange crush, the polar orange, the Hosmer Mountain orange, and we had five oranges there, and then with, with no identification, just in a, a bottle that was covered up. And then we, we had a little test, which ones do you like better and why? And if sun-kissed won and we came in second, then I'd say, how come they won? And then I would reverse engineer it and try to get closer. That. So I've done that for years and years and years, and that's why we have a better product. Wow. So you really got to the root of it. Yeah, I, 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 and I enjoyed it. Christ, I used to play softball on a regular basis, and when the games were over, instead of going home, at 9, 10 o'clock, I would go to the lab, and it was real quiet, and I would stay there till midnight, dicking around with the soda, <laughs> <laughs> because I, I enjoyed it. Did you have any big thoughts about changes with the company as you grew up? You know, you'd have arguments about the direction you want to go. Uh, yeah. there were t we had arguments, I can remember, because, you know, the plastic bottle came in and the glass bottles, uh, you know. So the environmental arguments were one thing, and I always fought for the returnable bottle, where, where mm -hmm. you were using a glass bottle, and then you put it through your washer, and you could wind up taking a dirty bottle and turning it back into by sterilizing it essentially yeah putting it through a, a caustic bath you know lie lie for guy a real strong uh, material that would clean anything out of a bottle and then it goes through a series of rinses and then you wind up so by reusing a bottle you're you're the good guys in the in the fight for the environment mm -hmm. if, if all the big companies didn't uh, sell out that concept. They all had bottle washers, and all of those Coke and Pepsi places have cut up their bottle washer. We don't want to use them anymore. We don't want to pay people to handle the bottles. We don't want to take a chance that there could be a lawsuit against us because something didn't come out of the bottle and somebody sues us. All of those kind of things factored into the cutting up of the bottle. And what that did was increase the carbon footprint put into the air by the beverage industry. Mm -hmm. like, seriously big big difference i have your little chart up on screen here the life of a glass bottle yeah that's not quite entirely accurate now because we could never figure out getting the the waste oil and making biodiesel that chart actually had us with the hope of getting the biodiesel mm -hmm. so everything else is right except the biodiesel part of it yeah okay. so that's one of the arguments that came in uh whether we would go to a throwaway bottle, you know, just fill it and, and, and you don't want them back. Just one-way packaging. The one-way mentality, the throwaway mentality that was foistered onto the whole country by the big companies probably in the mid-50s. Uh, I actually saw an advertisement from a can company of two guys in a canoe, and, and, and it showed one guy throwing the can into the water in a stream and they said, you don't have to bring back stuff from your picnic on the, on the water in the canoe. There was another one where we, we, we could have bottled soda from some other people. It's called private label, where you take your orange soda with your labels on it. And if some restaurant somewhere wanted to have their own label on the restaurant, then we'd have an arrangement where if they get the labels, we can stop our line, take our labels out and put the other guy's labels in and make, uh, you know, 20 cases of orange soda mm -hmm. of Pete's Pizza, P Peter's Pizza House, Make, so that he got to show his customers that he, he had his own orange soda, all right? And so my brother Andy wanted to do that more and more, and I kept saying, no, let's build our own brand. Why should we let somebody else get credit for who we are? Yeah. So that was an argument that went on for a while. <laughs>
What motivates you to work? What mo- what motivates me personally? Yeah. I think I enjoy people when I, when I get when I get stuck over at the store running the store and dealing with the public. You you have to be uh, kind of a people person. I don't want to be a person that's just in the office. Uh, doing the financial stuff particularly. I mean, you need a good yeah. old financial officer. And th- we suffered because my brother John, who passed away, he was running the financial officer. And my, my brother Andy's doing that now, and he's way more competitive, and he's doing a better job. So we're, we, we're doing over a million dollars worth of sell- sales now. That is very impressive. As far as other motivation, I, I'm a teacher at heart. I, I wanted to... Uh, some of... Some of my favorite people were teachers who got me interested in stuff, like the woman who was my chemistry teacher, for instance, used to let us come in after school, and she set up special experiments that we did. And it was interesting, just doing experiments. And I, I just love that. So I've always had a high degree of respect for educators. Good educators are so valuable. They're so underpaid and everything. I wanted to be a high school science teacher. I sent my applications around to seven or eight high schools, and at that time, I never got a a job that way. I wound up going off and working in industry, in the pesticide industry, because I'm a graduate of the College of Agriculture at at UConn, Mm -hmm. and so I got a job through one of the science, one of the companies that makes the chemicals that they use for either fertilizer or insecticides, and I wound up being a pesticide person. Not sales, but research and development. And I did that for a few years, and it was pretty interesting work. But in the end, it was big corporate company. And I, I, I believe strongly in small business capitalism. That's when you're working with your help. When you every day you work with people, you never forget the humanity involved. But some of these corporations, the guys are making 500 times what their workers make. And they just, they have no way of understanding what a working class person does. Even though I'm a business owner, I'm working class. I I know what it's like to work hard and I respect the people who work for us because I see how hard they work too. That's another motivation for me personally. And I think my brothers agree with that. We hate corporate capitalism, and we love small business capitalism. What future do you see for the Hosmer Mountain Company? Well, right right now we're so old that we we, we want to get out. First of all, if you don't have children, I don't have children. My brother Chuck never had any children. My other two brothers had some children, but they saw how hard we worked and the fact that we didn't make much money. You know, we don't drive big cars. We own our own houses, but we don't... We don't, you don't spend time on the golf course. You wind up being a slave to your business a little bit. One thing you would like to do in a small business is take your paycheck and divide your hours into it. Because <laughs> mm, yeah. you might be working 80 hours a week. Yeah. And if you're making an $800 paycheck every week, you're making $10 an hour. Make sure that you feel good getting up every day to go to work. And then usually, since it was kind of hard work, I've always slept well, too, because I'm usually tired at the end of the day. I I can remember saying to my brothers, let's at least make it to a 100-year-old company. That's a a fabulous level to get to. How many companies ever get to do that? Many little businesses, they are in debt, and then just like little farms and stuff where they have to sell portions of their land because they're not making enough selling milk okay that's very common that so uh, they're land rich and and money poor and it makes makes for hardship you wind up with the horrible ugly things happening in the family because Mm -hmm. of this this uh encroachment of capital uh corporate capitalism and that's a shame because people that work hard in farming and all that kind of stuff and businesses like us they're happier people than somebody reporting to a big corporation that's not even, you know, they may make a little bit more money, but they're not truly, uh, they're looking to get rid of them as soon as they can. But nothing is safe anymore. You know that. Yeah. Nothing is safe. They'll find a way. Now they got robots coming along. That's going to be the next thing. Yep. God, it's awful. It's all progress. Yeah. Jesus, that's, that's a word that's, 
you know, I don't think it truly applies. It's to me, it's it's going backwards. It's 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 not respecting the human being, the people, what's inside a person, what makes them tick, what makes them happy, what makes them content, and the direction we keep going in is against that. That's a shame. It really is. So that's why I'm proud. You asked me why I do this. I'm proud because we represent the good old days. We represent something that's closer. We still return our phone calls. We, if you call Hosmer Mountain, a human being picks up the phone. Hello, Hosmer mm -hmm. Mountain. <laughs> you don't get that a lot. We, we're looking for somebody to buy the company because, uh, you know, there's value there and somebody can take it to another level or whatever, you know, and continue it. So we have somebody interested that's got a historical mind and he's thinking of, geez, it would be cool to have a museum. Oh. A soda museum. Yeah, that okay? would be very interesting. And if he had a lot of money, he could do stuff like, instead of washing bottles and having to heat up the water with oil that we buy, just like you're heating your house, what if somebody was to build a solar system where you could get thermal heat off the roof mm. and then heat up your hot water to wash your bottles with solar energy? We would become national heroes. It's just that it would take, you know, too, too many thousands of dollars to do it. And, you know, no, we're I mean, getting a little old, but I would, I would want to sell it to a person who had those kind of ideals. Over the history of Hosmer Mountain's existence, we can see how family businesses have changed and what it takes for them to continue in recent and previous generations. Bill is one of the kindest, wisest, hardworking, and most gregarious people I've talked to. You can truly tell Bill loves his work and community through years of tireless labor for smiles from customers and dissemination of Hosmer's history. I highly encourage you to go try some Hosmer soda. Their sarsaparilla and birch beer are my absolute favorite. You can order Hosmer merch and soda on their website linked below. And with that, have a good day.